On this episode of the NH Experience, I have a very special guest. He is the LA City Councilman of the 8th District of the one of the greatest cities in the nation. Yes, I am biased. I'm from the West Coast. I'm from Los Angeles. He is the one and only Marquise Harris Dawson. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, sir. How are you? There it is. I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing great, and thank you for coming on. I know you've been busy as of late. Uh, Los yeah. Angeles uh, has recently issued in a, n- a new mayor, uh, the first black woman mayor uh, right. of Los right. Angeles in, in Karen Bass. She's only the second black mayor uh, after Tom Bradley, uh, who became uh, the mayor uh, many, many years ago. Uh, I want to talk to you about just being able to work with the new mayor. Obviously, she has some plans that she wanted to institute after defeating uh, Rick Caruso and uh, a very uh, highly contested mayoral race uh, in the city. But what are some of the uh, things that you want to see uh, her bring to fruition as far as not just with the city, but also in your district, which is the 8th district as well? Well, you know, I think the great thing about Karen is her ability to marshal the resources to get everybody involved, get everybody to the table, like get this housing built, get people off the street, get people drug treatment, get people jobs, get people whatever they need so that we don't have our neighbors living on the street from one end of the city to the other. I think that's, you know, job number one, two and three. And that's what I'm most looking forward to working with with uh, Mayor Bass on. Obviously, with Mayor Bass, too, there's one thing that a a lot of uh constituents whether in your district or many uh angelinos in 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 the city especially from the black community um those who have uh black businesses uh and other minority owned businesses as far as bringing the economic value as far as being able to have access to capital which is one of the growing problems that we face uh as business owners uh what do you say to that sir and what are some of the steps that you're taking uh to help ensure that as far as we get the access to capital and get the capital to continue to sustain uh the businesses to be able to keep the city uh, growing and on an on a up and up scale? Well, you know, I think the the economic challenge and the extent to which our community is locked out of the regular capital markets, you know, it's so frustrating. You see someone come up with some silly kind of app and suddenly they've raised $15 million uh, in Silicon Valley. And two months later, you know, that app is dead and that person moves on to the next thing. And we have real legitimate businesses that have been profitable for years and we have trouble getting a basic loan. And so We have to continue to fight at the state and federal level to make sure the rules are fair for everyone and they don't discriminate against you just because of where you're doing business or what your background is. Uh, But the second thing is the government also has a good amount of capital. So, you know, if you are a sound guy and you got a sound company, the government should be giving you some of those contracts to do sound for government events. Um, And that may be how you get your start and you get all the equipment you need and you meet the make the relationships you need. So I think on both fronts, one, we can have a lot of direct impact on the other one. We have less direct impact. But I think when we're all rowing together, we can make progress. Now, unfortunately, recently we heard the uh, comments of some uh, council members that were heard on audio uh, as far as making racist and homophobic remarks. Uh, One of the individuals has since resigned from her position, uh, but the other two remain on board. Um, obviously this really had a devastating effect on the city as far as the communities are concerned from the black community as well as the Latino community. How are we able to, or what are some of the steps that the council and the mayor, as far as Mayor Bass is concerned as well, being able to bridge those gaps and continue to, to have healing and unity amongst the black and brown communities in Los Angeles? Well, the first thing I think is, you know, Kevin DeLeon, uh, has got to resign. Uh, Nuri Martinez has resigned. Ron Herrera has resigned. Uh, the voters kicked Gil Cedillo out of the council. So all three of those folks are effectively gone. Uh, but Kevin DeLeon's kind of hanging around and uh, he keeps making matters worse by inserting himself into uh, the process where the city's really trying to heal and move on. One of the great things about this whole fiasco with the tape is the way the Latino community you know, really came up and said, no, nah, this is not, we're not about this. These are not, these, these comments don't represent us. You know, they should resign and all of that. And so that you're seeing unprecedented unity, but as long as he's there, he's like the fly in the ointment. And so we got to make being an elected official as uncomfortable as possible for him and make sure he knows and his constituents knows uh, that anti-blackness is not welcome in the city of Los Angeles, no matter whether you won an election or not. Now, what, what can Angelinos do? Because when I went out there the day of when everybody was protesting, I happened to be out on the street and I saw a lot of black 
uh, community leaders. I saw a lot of Latino community leaders, obviously people from the Asian American communities as well. Uh, we're obviously in solidarity, which was really, a, to me, a really a great sign. What can the constituents and the citizens do of Los Angeles to ensure that Kevin DeLeon uh, put pressure on him to get him out of the paint, as it were, and to get him out of city council and city government? Well, there will be a recall uh, of uh, Kevin DeLeon. If you know anybody who lives in the 14th district, you know, downtown Eagle Rock, um, uh, Montecito Heights, Highland Park, uh, Lincoln Heights. Boyle Heights, get them to sign the petition. Uh, 21,000 signatures it takes to get it on the ballot. Once it gets on the ballot, I think he'll be recalled easily. But we got to get that important step done. And also, Stu, I, I think people have to remember this, too. There is the Angel uh, Angel Project, uh, city project that's going on in downtown Los Angeles. And I, I recently spoke with Don Peoples, who's one of uh, the not only the main investors, but uh, the company that he holds along with his business partner as far as building that project and he was telling me he was emphatic and saying no we're not going to tolerate anti-black racism of any kind we're not going to deal with kevin de leon who happens to, happens to be in his district uh but he will deal with others uh in the city council have you spoken to with that gentleman at all or has yeah. anybody in city council have? you know i've spoken with mr peoples and i was act frankly shocked i i had no idea the way they were being treated uh by mr de leon and i'm the chairperson of the uh, planning and land use committee so that project comes through my committee and i had kind of wondered you know why it was taking so long to get to us but you know big projects like that they always have some type of problem or another when mr when i talked to mr peoples and he informed me that he had not as had as much of a meeting with kevin de leon i was floored I'll tell you why that's important since the time uh kevin de leon has been the council member three major high-rise developments have been approved all of them by white developers He's worked with them. He's walked them through the process. He's advocated for them on council and their projects got entitled and they're now underway. One of them is really famous. It's the old LA Times headquarters downtown. So this idea that he puts out that like, oh, he was trying to work out the affordable housing as a part of it. None of the other projects that he's approved has as much affordable housing as Mr. Peoples' project. Um, so it's pretty clear to me what's happening. Um, you know, no matter what type of spin Mr. De Leon tries to put on it. Absolutely. But hopefully that project gets built because I know it's going to create not only a lot of revenue, but a lot of jobs for those in the city construction right. as well as retail and other jobs. Uh, and I, I'm not, speaking with, with, with Don Peoples, I know he's very adamant about getting the project done, which is a, a, a really positive sign, mm -hmm. uh, despite all the chaos that has ensued uh with everything that's going on now you being a, a, a native of, of la south central la the pride of morehouse college hbcu you um you had an opportunity to work with the late great nipsey hustle uh we recently saw there was some excerpts from a documentary that's going to be coming out relatively soon that's executive produced by maverick carter and lebron james about the life and times of nipsey hustle um and you're also involved with the destination crenshaw project as well uh, just talk to me, in, in, knowing that the things that you knew about uh, Nipsey and working closely with him at, at, at particular points and times. Now that we're in 2022, going into 2023, if Nipsey Hustle was around today, what would you think he would say about what's going on in his community and in, 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 in the district as well? Well, you know, I think Nipsey, if he were around today, he would be out front. He would be highlighting the cooperation between African-Americans and Latinos, certainly in his company, the Marathon Company. You know, as you know, some of the main principles are, are Latino folks from the neighborhood pointing out how we live side by side, pointing out that we're the example and they're the exception. Um, and I think that that's really what we all have to do. Uh, and, you know, I think one of the great there are a lot of great things about Nip, but one of the great things about Nip is he didn't get caught up in the controversies or the, you know, the, arg the side arguments. He was always pressing towards progress. And so I think that's what he would be doing now. And, you know, he would be saying we got to keep it moving. Um, and, you know, this is not acceptable, but, you know, stuff happens. Let's keep moving. When you look at what, what Nipsey, this the young man that he was and just the visionary that he was and, and, and um, everything that we, we learned about later on as far as him building computers at a young age. I mean, and then him being instrumental, in trying to create a STEM program uh, in the city and, and working with you as well. Are there any plans to continue some of those operations uh, that he put in place before his untimely passing? A lot of those operations are still going. They actually never stopped. Uh, one of the great things about Nipsey was he understood his role 
as a public figure, figure to inspire and create space for people who could do the day to day work. Um, and so those pro pro programs are going on and on and on. And he did he wasn't the type of person where he had to be doing everything himself. Uh, and so those projects are, are happening. They're happening uh, at a very, very good rate. Destination Crenshaw is rolling along. You know, we'll do Nipsey Hustle, um, uh, Nipsey Hustle Park at Slauson and Crenshaw. So that'll be exciting. That'll be kind of a tribute to Nip. Um, and we just announced that there'll be Sola Tech on Crenshaw Boulevard, which is a tech center, which it'll be a gaming center, a computer programming center, as well as a music studio that Live Nation and others help uh, sponsor, where folks in a neighborhood can come right in, learn how to use the equipment, learn how to program and create their own art. Yeah, as I drive down Crenshaw, I mean, I'm seeing the the, the, the construction of, of Destination Crenshaw. I'm definitely excited to see when it comes to full fruition. But the first project, obviously, was getting the, the K line, which is the LAX Crenshaw yep. line, yep. down yep. Crenshaw to go to these these various places, which I think is absolutely incredible. Um, but you being native Angelino, I know you a sports fan. So, of course, Councilman Harris Dawson, I could not let you get on this show without getting your perspective on – now, the Lakers seem like they're, they're trying to – find their way, tread water. Obviously, the Clippers are doing what they're doing. Um, what are your thoughts on just the Lakers and the Clippers uh, so far, obviously being early in the season? Well, look, I, you know, I, I can't tell you that I follow the Clippers uh, much. Uh, you know, big fan of Kawhi and Paul George because they're homeboys. Uh, but, you know, don't follow the Clippers as much as I follow the Lakers. And, you know, the Lakers story is a very fascinating one. It's I think uh, Russell Westbrook is a, you know, is a work in progress and a work of art. Uh, he's a person that steps up for the community. So as an elected official, I see Russell out in the community as much or more than anybody. Uh, he was there, you know, on a lot of the projects we worked on with NIP, as a matter of fact. But to watch how he's, you know, taking the role, he's willing to come off the bench. He's flourishing uh, coming off the bench and the team is finding a way to put together victories. Uh, I think is a very, very good story. It's, to me, it's one of the most exciting stories in the NBA. Now, we just came off a of Super Bowl, obviously not just with them being at SoFi and, and, and the fan base is coming, but also, too, the Rams winning in Los Angeles, uh, winning a Super Bowl, second trip to the Super Bowl since returning to Los Angeles. This season, not so much. It's not not so much to be in wave. I don't see as many Ram flags going down the street. Well, uh, I think, is, like, I, look, I'm a bit older than you, so I was growing up when the Rams left L.A., so, you know, they got to put up a few more championships before <laughs> I'll be a true believer. Every time I've been to SoFi, there were more fans there for the other team than there were for the Rams, including in the year that they won the Super Bowl, and so, you know, that they're tanking this year doesn't hit me so hard because uh, <laughs> uh, I feel like they got a lot of stripes to earn. I mean, this, this to me, is a Laker and a Dodger town. You know, the Laker, Lakers and Dodgers have have put up victories, put up championships. I think the Rams got a ways to go. As, and, and also, there's a team near your area, uh, obviously, in the ninth as well, in the ninth district shared by uh, Councilman Current Price, right. the USC Trojans. Yes. Seems like the, now, are, are you are you taking them to go to go all the way to the national championship? I, I'm excited about the Trojans. I don't know. You know, I haven't been able to. Uh, you know, with the tapes and all this, not and the election. I haven't been able to catch any games, so I don't know how the teams in the Big Ten and the Southeast are doing. Because, uh, you know, Alabama and those folks in LSU mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the Big Ten, sort of the central, uh, the, the Midwestern teams. I haven't seen how good they are or are not, uh, but USC looks looks awfully well. It's funny, the, the one game that I saw uh, they is the game they lost, and then I was at a game uh, that they dominated. Um pretty resoundingly so i'm excited about it yeah especially with the national championship being at sofi stadium in los and in inglewood but la is especially with the convention center with everything that's going to go on if i'm sure that's going to be have, i mean the good thing about usc is they're seem like they're going to peak towards the end of the season whereas ucla seemed like they peaked maybe a couple weeks ago, a couple, <laughs> weeks ago you know like so it's you know they they don't you want to end the season with momentum and usc is doing that it sounds like you got a little bias towards uh, SC. You want to throw up the fight on? So? Well, you know, look, in football, <laughs> you know, football, this is an SC town. In college basketball, it's UCLA. You know, it's – it's uh, there's a division of labor in our major universities here. Indeed, indeed. Now, a little birdie told me you are, in fact, a shoe head, if I'm not mistaken. I have, I have a few dozen pairs of sneakers at the house. <laughs> now, do you have a closet full of, full of shoes, or is it just one like area? A room? 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so give me your top five kicks that, that Councilman Harris Dawson has to have at all times, whether you're traveling or whether you're, you're, you're moving around the city. That's interesting. Well, you know, where, when I'm traveling, I travel with my common projects uh, because they're easy to pack and they kind of go with everything. Um, I uh, really like a good Air Max and, you know, I'm 180, 90, uh, whatever, but a good Air Max in, in you know, whatever colorway ha happens to work with what I'm wearing uh, that day. Um, you know, and then I like obviously the classics, you know, the ones and the fours um, and the 11s. Oh, you can't go wrong with the 11s. 11s, you can dress up, dress down. That's the beauty of them. Yeah, no, I'm like, I feel like I might have too many pairs of 11s. At this point. <laughs> you them. have too many pairs of 11s? I'm yeah, shocked. It's crazy. Because, <laughs> you know, every time a new color comes out, you feel like you have to have it. And then when it gets in your closet, you're like, oh, I didn't really have to have it. So you didn't jump on the dunks phase. You haven't gotten to the dunks phase yet, the Nike dunks. You know, dunks. the thing with the dunks is, uh, and this is going to be my sneaker stop coming out, the quality of leather that they use in the dunks, they crease really easily. So it's like, you know, like, I feel like dunks, like you wear them four or five times and then they're done. Uh, unless you're, you don't mind wearing sneakers with a crease in them, which we don't do that. I will tell you a secret, shoe trees. Yes, but on dunks though, because I feel like yes. the leather is so kind of flimsy. If you go, there's a there's a shoe place, and I'll I'll send that information to you that okay. they specially made for for sneakers. It's mm -hmm. like shoe trees for oh, sneakers, and they okay. keep them okay. fresh. So that way, when you pack them or you have them out, they don't have that that yeah. that general crease that they have in. So yeah, no, Just, I got um. So my wife, I got my wife uh, the Jackie Robinsons and the Fruity Pebble LeBron one. So Ooh. she can work them, but. I'm too rough on shoes for them. Did you get now? Did you did you get her the the, the Ben and Jerry ones, or did you did you just pass on? I haven't those? gotten her the Ben and Jerry ones. I want to okay. see how the Fruity Pebble ones work because that's. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty sick. I have to yeah. admit, I want a pair of myself. Those are right, actually pretty right. sick. So we'll see. What are your plans for 2023, Councilman Harris Dawson? As far as not just the Eighth District, but what do you where, where do you want the city to be? in well, 2023 look I, look I think it's time for the city to rally i think the wind is at our back i think the city has taken you know several gut punches you know starting in 2019 i really marked the time you know that that morning that we found out nipsey hustle had been shot you know really from then on you know then you know we lost kobe bryant then it was the pandemic you know then it was the situation with you know my fellow councilman mark ridley thomas you know, and then it just it was back to back to back to back things that we hit. And it kind of I felt ended with the tapes and the election of Karen Bass uh, and the resurgence of the Lakers after going 0 and 5. Uh, I feel like we're turning the corner as a city and, and a community. Two quick things before I let you get on out of here. One thing about you talk about our community as us healing and, and really coming together. But the one thing I've noticed in, our, in any plants, uh, you know, and a lot of people I've spoken with before I jumped on this interview, uh, you know, reminded me as far as the food desert situation is concerned, because we've lost grocery stores, especially first chain grocery stores in our communities. Are there any plans to try to revitalize those grocery stores so that we can have places to shop in our own community? Um, well, the Ralphs and the Vons is in, in the pavilions of the world. Yeah, so we got two grocery stores in the queue, uh, both first rate um, and another Target, which, you know, Target now has food. Um, so we we have those uh, things in the queue ready to happen. But, you know, one of the things I think we got to do as a community is it is true that there are food deserts. It's also true that the grocery store model is dying everywhere. Mm. Um, it's not just, I mean, you can drive to other communities and you see their grocery stores are closing too. So it's not one of those things that's just happening to us. And I think the grocery store model is one that needs some innovation and needs to be looked at. One of the things we found out when Amazon bought Whole Foods is that Whole Foods has never turned to profit in any year that it's been in existence. Wow. Um, so, you know, that tells you that you have a broken model and, uh, I think we got to figure out better ways to get food to our people. Absolutely. Now, if you were on an island. And you only have three albums you can play and you bring with you. Who would they be and why? He's like, oh, Lord. <laughs> this is a really not fair question. Um, <laughs> the, uh, it depends on what island, what the climate was, who I was with and all those things. But um, I think that uh, I have not fully uh, digested uh, the latest Kendrick album. 
Um, I'm like stuck on a couple songs that I, you know, every time I hear it, I hear something new. Uh, one of my favorite albums and one of the albums that sort of gives me peace is I Want You, the Marvin Gaye uh, record. Um, and then, I, you know, the third one could be a toss up. It could be anything from Straight Out of Compton to Scorpion by Drake. I mean, it could be a variety of things. Mm-hmm. That's a good selection. I like that. That's a good selection. Any 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 binge watching you, you've been able to do to kind of relax I and kind of. I re- am on Abbott Elementary. Uh, I believe uh, Quinta is like brilliant, like just br- like Jerry Seinfeld, brilliant. Like that show's amazing. Yeah, I, I'm a Abbott. I, I found it. I, I was watching on Hulu at first. I didn't watch the the, the actual when it came yeah. on the first season. I started watching it. I couldn't. I binge watched it. I couldn't wait for season two. And I'm loving every minute of it. So, yeah, that, that is the show for sure. Yeah, I'm excited because, you know, with the election and the tapes and all the drama, I've fallen behind this season. But I'm eager to binge watch over the Thanksgiving holiday. As you should. One of the hardest working men in, in city government, Councilman Marquise Harris Dawson of the 8th District of Los Angeles. Thank you so much, sir. Really Thank appreciate you. you coming on the show and really sharing uh, not only some information, but your experiences as well uh, with the audience. And uh, please let everyone know where they can continue to keep up with you and find you when you're not in Chambers, when you're not at City Hall. Excellent. So I actually have a podcast myself. It's called Off the Record with MHD. You can find it on Spotify or wherever you uh, get your look, listen to podcasts. Also on all the social medias, my handle is MHDCD8 on almost all of them. Uh, and uh, you can always find us on the cityofla.org website. Just look for Council District 8.